Hi, folks. Thank you so much for coming to this talk. Uh, I am kicking off the open source uh, leadership summit track, and there's going to be a ton of great stuff in this track today, so I hope that you stick around. Um, I'm Kara. I work at GitHub. Um, I work with open source maintainers and help advocate for them internally and in the industry at large. I ran the first cohort of the GitHub Accelerator last year. I organized Maintainer Month, which is coming up in May. Check it out. Good time to talk about open source maintenance. Um, Whoa, there we go. Um, and also, I have a maintainer community, so chat with me afterwards if that's something you're interested in joining. So we're going to talk about funding today. And we're just talking about cash. The majority of things that open source maintainers need is not necessarily money. Um, but we've only got 20 minutes together, and it's going to go fast. So we can focus on one thing. There's big money value in open source. I'm sure many of you read the recent study uh, with the 8 billion number. Um, European Commission in 2021 said, we predict an increase of 10%, uh, just 10% in contributions to open source software code would annually generate an additional 0. 0.4 to 0.6% GDP, uh, which is pretty wild. I am going to talk about how money flows specifically to open source maintainers and projects. Uh, this is just sort of the state of the ecosystem and how this money moves through it. I think there should be more awareness of this. Um, you will see this chart again, but I welcome folks to make their own chart and improve upon this. So why do we care about funding software maintenance? There's a lot of reasons we care about humans. We love open source. Um, let's say 90% of companies use open source, which is awesome. That's super cool. Uh, FOSS constitutes 70 to 90% of any given piece of modern software solutions. Also absolutely sick, right? 89% of code bases contain open source more than four years out of date. It's, a little, it's like a little less cool. <laughs> um, 84% of code bases contained at least one known open source vulnerability. You know, I could have cut this slide and just put XZ uh, up on there, but I wrote this before, so forgive me. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to fund open source, um, and I would say security is a really big one as well. So what do we know about open source maintainers and money? Not a ton of research out there. There's a little bit, but Tidelift's State of the Open Source Maintainer Report is one of the best sources. They found that 60% of maintainers are unpaid hobbyists. 13% um, are identify as a professional maintainer, um, but 60% of these folks are unpaid. Of those unpaid folks, 77% would prefer to make money, which is understandable. I also prefer to make money. Um, but when you look at these folks, so 44% of maintainers are solo maintainers. So if they win the lottery and they move to a remote island, which is good for them, there's no one to take over the project. But also if they burn out and they need to leave, there's no one to run this project. 58% have at least considered quitting a project, who hasn't? And 22% have actually quit maintaining a project. Now there's nothing wrong with moving on. That's healthy and good, but this is sort of an unsustainable state when it's not something people are, are making the choice about, they're kind of burning out. Fortunately, we know that 56% said earning more money for maintenance work would actually help keep them from quitting. So we know that money helps. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how, the platforms that money moves through in the first place. So funding platforms enable payments to FOSS projects and maintainers um, and are a good way to help allocate that money. So we see funding platforms usually getting money from both individuals and from companies. There's a lot of great funding platforms out there. The more the merrier. They all have specialties, right? We've got dependency funding with like thanks.dev and StackAid. We've got Patreon, which has done such a great job with crowdfunding and has a lot of open source on it. So there's a lot of different models. I don't have much time, so I'm just going to talk about GitHub sponsors and Open Source Collective, the fiscal host on Open Collective, um, because they contain many of kind of those different features across them. I'm also not going to have time to talk about additional funding platform models, subscription models like Tidelift. Um, none of this includes quadratic funding, which is coming out of kind of the blockchain space. Um, we're not going to cover any of that here. But it's important to look at those models and consider them. So how much money is coming through GitHub sponsors and Open Source Collective? This looks fake. It looks like a copy-paste error, but it's, it's weirdly real. <laughs> so through each of those, $40 million has come through since 2019, which is awesome. 
um, direct money to open source maintenance. And uh, for Open Source Collective, in 2023, that was about $10 million. Now, a lot of this money comes through FOSS contributor funds. A FOSS contributor fund is a framework for selecting open source projects that a company supports financially. It's also designed to encourage open source participation and help companies take an active role in sustaining the projects they depend on. This is awesome. So FOSS funds, um, here you can see usually distribute money via a funding platform. So companies have given money to open source for, for a while now, um, but the rise of the concept of a FOSS fund really comes about in 2019 with Dwayne O'Brien's work at Indeed. Dwayne's in the room, which is awesome. Um, and a, yeah, and a lot of companies adopted this model. What's great about this FOSS fund model is it says, let's talk publicly about what you're giving and let's give employees who contribute to open source an opportunity to vote on where that money goes, which is great. Um, what I was really curious about writing this talk is how much money is actually moving through FOSS funds. Um, back in the napkin, um, I think about $12 million uh, went through FOSS funds in 2023. Um, there's a lot of great examples. There's Century, which gave 500K. Chad Whitaker, who did that, is in the audience. Um, and $12 million is a lot of money for any of us. I know it would be a lot of money to me, and it's great. But this is kind of a weak number for companies giving directly to open source. Like, this is pretty painful for me to see um, because we're going to need a lot more money than that to sustain this ecosystem. Um, so what are some patterns around FOSS contributor funds? What can we kind of say about them? We know they're substantially benefiting maintainers, which is awesome, but they're also not, I mean, $12 million. They're not a sustainable single model for the ecosystem. We can't rely on them. We also know they're not really contributing in most cases to really stable, predictable funding. The majority of them have employees voting on things, which is good. I love that. But projects can't know if they're going to get money or not. So that, that doesn't really, that's not long-term sustainability. Um, we also know they're particularly vulnerable to macroeconomic conditions. Um, so in 2023, a lot of FOSS funds took a dive. We saw companies that gave 500K in 2022 give $0 in 2023. They were not resilient. Um, we also know that expecting companies to fund open source for the positive press, I think, is a failure. Um, I think it's good. Like Companies should get positive press, and that rules, but we cannot rely on that model because that model has given us about $12 million. Um, and also, a lot of the companies that are giving a ton of awesome money to open source don't want to talk about it publicly, which is totally fine and acceptable, but it shows that positive press is not the driver there. Um, we also know that companies sharing their funding structures has paid off. It has inspired other companies. It's positive. You should share when you do open source funding if you're allowed to. We all know companies can be doing their thing. Um, I think in terms of strengthening this model, there's a lot of opportunities for more data, more data on dependencies, more data on the benefits that companies actually receive so people can argue for it internally. There's a lot of folks working on this. Um, I know GitHub's working on this, among many others. Um, I also think awareness is really good. Um, FOSS funders, if you want to join that initiative, is gathering a list of companies that are giving to open source so they can share tips with each other. Um, and then there's a lot that can be done around tooling. The administrative bulk of trying to give to a number of open source projects is still really high, despite great work by a lot of platforms. Um, and so I think there's still a lot of work to kind of do there. Um, the factor that most affects sponsorship is the developer's social status in the community, studies have found. So we have work to do there in terms of how do we fund what we actually really need instead of just charismatic people. So individuals, many of you may give to open source projects um, and to maintainers, which is awesome. So that's that direct money. It goes both directly via cash, so like you know, Venmo, stuff like that, and also via funding platforms. So 60% of GitHub sponsors funding in 2022 was from individuals. Like, y'all rule. We also know that across funding platforms, individuals are significantly outperforming FOSS funds. Y'all are kicking butt, and you should feel proud. In addition to that, uh, when we saw the economic downturn in 2023, individual sponsorships were resilient. They continued to grow. They did not go down. Y'all did not give up on open source. 
when we all had to pay 25% more for eggs. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a lot to be proud of here, but this is not a sustainable model for the ecosystem. We can't do this ourselves. Um, so I think there's a big role for companies to step up more. So this is not individuals keeping the ecosystem afloat. Let's talk about foundations. Foundations are a big part of supporting open source projects. It's a really common method of getting support for a project to join a foundation that helps steward that project. Um, so the way that this ecosystem kind of works in terms of money flowing through, right? We've got money from companies via membership and donation to software foundations who give resources to projects. And then we also have direct employment um, from companies of maintainers for projects that are under that foundation umbrella. So how much money is moving through there? Um, in 2022, uh, from the top 32 software foundations, excluding Wikimedia, we saw $304 million US. Um, bigger number, this is good. We're still not there. We've got billions of dollars in value with open source, right? So this is still got a ways to go. <laughs> um, and then Linux Foundation uh, saw 177 million in 2022 and 262 million in 2023. Awesome. Um, this is the money that supports the event we're at right now. There's not great money in most events. So uh, thank you if you gave money to the LF. <laughs> uh, that's how we're here. So the way that foundations support projects depends on the foundation and also depends on the project and its relationship with that foundation. But in general, uh, legal and financial services, project governance, hosting services, marketing and advocacy, security audits, travel, stuff like that. If a maintainer is being asked to wear like 15 hats, the foundation can help take it down to like maybe five hats, which is great. Um, foundations employing project maintainers directly, however, is very rare. That's not how this model is set up. So this is where we encounter the professional maintainer. This is our 13% from that Tidelift survey. The majority of these folks are employed by companies. Linux Foundation Research 2023 found among critical open source projects, the majority of maintainers and core contributors enjoy full-time employment. So companies that depend on these projects and are invested in these projects hire someone to be a maintainer or core contributor to make sure the project is flourishing and they can depend on it and it integrates with all their stuff. So this is often the foundation model. Um, this means that foundations have a really tight loop with companies um, who rely on their projects because maintainers getting paid really relies on that. So it's a lot of relation with companies. Um, and then with these patterns, right, we know most software foundations don't directly employ maintainers. Uh, foundations focus on removing that overhead. I think what's important here with all the money, again, insufficient money, but much bigger numbers at least moving through to foundations, is that they have uh, much better administrative tools for companies to give to open source. Giving to all your dependencies is complicated and hard, and there's a huge overhead. Uh, foundations make it much easier. Uh, they have great processes. They can show you clearly like one benefit that you get instead of a thousand little ones. Um, so it's vastly similar, simpler for companies to give a large sum to foundations. There's a lot to learn from this model. I think there's a lot to think about in terms of um, maintainers and where they're getting their funding and like how we look at different versions of this model. Um, but it's like there is a lot of success here in accessing and tapping into corporate money. Uh, I'd be remiss not to talk a little bit about grant and uh, government funding. So grant funding is a one-time agreement where you say, I'm going to do this. Someone gives you money to do it, and then you do it, um, which is usually different from maintenance funding. This is via kind of two paths you'll see here, right? So we've got taxes coming in from companies and individuals through to governments doing grants. And then we also have just rich people giving money to philanthropic orgs, which are giving money to grants. Um, my favorite example uh, is the Sovereign Tech Fund, an initiative of the German government. I know we have at least one person from the STF um, here at Open Source Summit. Huge fan of them. So they, in their first year, invested over 15 million euros in 40 technologies. And what they did is they looked and said, what's the unglamorous key stuff that we all depend on that's not getting enough money? And how do we give them money for sustainability, for maintenance? Um, I think that a maintenance fund like this is really key. And I love seeing the German government kind of um, 
put that forward. I think what's important here too is because it relies on taxes, it's not relying on the goodwill of companies. It's saying, how do we look at these things as the digital public goods that they are? Uh, the Actually, I just added this. So the Open Technology Fund just opened a FOSS sustainability fund you can apply to by May 17th. So um, check that out. It's nice to see another kind of similar sustainability fund coming out. In terms of grants, um, there's also scientific and academic software funding. If you talk to folks in the scientific and academic space about grants, they're like, yeah, I eat grants for breakfast, whatever. And then if you talk to like any of the rest of us, we're like, I, you know, you could get a grant. I don't know what that is. So um, there's kind of a limited understanding of that outside of that ecosystem. So we've got agencies like the NSF and NASA looking to advance software with academic or research relationships. And then we have philanthropies like Moore, Sloan, CZI supports a lot of pro projects. Um, in general, these grants support new things, new features, um, rather than maintenance. So there's still that sustainability, like maintenance gap there, um, and folks having to put forward something new. Nothing wrong with that, but there's kind of an element missing. Venture funding. Um, venture funding is when someone gives you a lot of money, and, and then they own you. Um, so they... <laughs> They kind of go via investment, usually to a related business. I wish we had time to talk about business models here, but we don't, um, which then plays into that open source project or has that maintainer. Um, VC funding patterns, just to talk, touch really quickly on them, um, we see investment in open core businesses really increasing, which I think means that we need to make sure founders can work with VCs who understand the peculiarities and the strengths of open source, which many VCs don't understand, and the ones who do really do get it. Uh, investors are looking to get in earlier on hot areas like AI. They're kind of hungry for early access to open source projects that they think might hit it big and go commercial. Um, so I think we need more materials to help maintainers understand when someone comes to them and says, do you want a boatload of money? What do they say? Like, how do they, they keep them warm? Do they say no? Do they say yes? How do we support maintainers who are making those decisions increasingly early on in a project? Um, <coughs> sorry. One thing we did last year looking at these kinds of funding models is GitHub Accelerator. So we took 20 open source projects. We gave each of them 20K in funding. Uh, Jessica, who's here with PyPandoc, was in the program, which was really fun. And it was a 10-week program. What we acknowledged with this is there's not really a one-size-fits-all approach to open source funding. Like, I wish we could take people in the program and be like, here's your path. We know it. But, like, we don't, right? We're all still kind of doing experiments um, and getting better education out there. I think we need accelerators like this that don't require all projects to be startups. Um, there's a lot of barriers that we talked about that independent FOSS maintainers face. Um, I think the understanding of business models, there's a lot that we can all do there around education. Um, I think legal guidance and financial advice is a hard thing for us to ask solo maintainers to be an expert on. Um, and they need to have better access to people who understand open source and how to help on those matters. Um, there's also a lot of difficulties around community perception, this expectation that maintainers will work on their projects full time, but that we maybe shame them if they try to ask for money. So there's, there's a lot going on there in the ecosystem as well. Um, my, my favorite little, just to throw a little tidbit out there, right? Simon Willison of Dataset uh, was in this and did a really fun experiment to say, what does it look like to pay maintainers to speak to your team, like at your company? How do you make use of these underutilized company training and consulting budgets? Like, there's a, there's a bucket for this. You don't even know how to spend it. You can pay maintainers to come in and talk to your team for an hour uh, with a time box commitment. And I think that's a really cool, fun model. I think it's also worth looking at Filippo Valsorda's um, experiment with retainer agreements, um, which I wish we had time for today. So putting it all together, right? Here's our chart. Here's money kind of moving through the ecosystem or kind of some of it making to maintainers, but it's not a ton of money. Um, I think in terms of what's next, I don't have a solution. I'm so sorry, I wish I did. I hope someone else gives a talk that has a solution. Um, but we need more data to know what works and what doesn't, if you can do some research on that. We need more companies publicly committing to funding, if that's something you can encourage at your company. Uh, maintainers need more research and, men and mentorship on how to support their projects. Um, Personally, I think we should advocate for governmental funding. Um, and also looking back on 2023 and remembering that corporate budgets can be pretty fickle and we need to talk about resilience in open source funding. 
Uh, so maintainer month is coming up in May, maintainermonth.github.com. Uh, it's a great time to talk about open source maintenance. Um, Kevin from GitHub is going to talk about funding the future, open source funding specifically at GitHub on Wednesday uh, at 4.55, so go check that out. That's um, a really good parallel with this talk. And um, Dwayne, when's your birds of a feather? 11.50 a.m. And what's the topic? So funding FOSS. Funding FOSS. Great. Go to that birds of a feather. Um, thank you to many folks, uh, a bunch of whom are in this room. Uh, and that is exactly my time. Thank you. Woo!